Well, there's new outrage after a former Marine is arrested and involuntarily detained in a psychiatric ward for posting some anti-government messages on Facebook. Several civil rights groups in Virginia are now saying that the police violated the First Amendment rights of this 26-year-old veteran. According to the police, he posted the following message earlier this month. Sharpen my axe. I'm here to sever heads. All right, there's a lot more to this whole story. So I'm joined now by Esther Panich. She is a criminal and civil trial attorney. And Fred Tisi is a former federal prosecutor. Welcome uh, to you both. So Thanks for having me. That's Thank what you. we know about the Post, that he, that he wrote, uh, sharpen my axe, I'm here to sever heads. Then there's a state law that allows the emergency temporary psychiatric commitment upon the recommendation of a mental health professional uh, in the state. And that's what they acted on. Did they do anything wrong, Fred? No, you know what, Martha? I don't, I don't think they did. You know, let's not forget that within the last four weeks, a military veteran shot and killed a bunch of Sikh pacifists and a police officer. Mm -hmm. We had the worst act of domestic terrorism in our country by an active military guy. And we've had all these recriminations about what happened in Colorado, about people saying that there may have been evidence that this guy was going to do something. So he hasn't been arrested. And quite frankly, law enforcement doesn't have the luxury of waiting to find out whether or not this guy's really serious. And he does have some issues, including his theory that our government was involved in the 9-11 terrorist attack. So I think, you know, he hasn't been arrested. He's been sent down for evaluation. No one's ever gone to jail for an evaluation. So it raises the question, though, Esther, I mean, you know, where is the line of free speech? He wrote this on a Facebook page. He did not target any specific individuals as far as, as, far as I could tell in, in taking a look at this story. Uh, you know, what are you allowed to say? What are you not allowed to say? This, we have entered the era of thought police. If the police can now come in based on what you are expressing, as is your First Amendment right under our Constitution, which, by the way, is something this veteran fought for, for all of us, then we have now, there is no line between your ability to, uh, to criticize the government and now going to jail. And in fact, he was arrested. This may not be a criminal case, but when you are detained and not free to leave, and sent to a hospital involuntarily, you are being detained. Let's not make any mistake about it. If he was free to leave, then I would agree he's not being detained. No. But he is not. And in fact, he was placed in cuffs. He was placed in the back of a car, a law enforcement because vehicle. Because he would not go voluntarily. And taken to the hospital. Uh, his, his How mother, many people would go voluntarily? No, I agreed. Oh. Uh, his mother no. says that his free speech has been violated uh, and that uh, you know, she's, he saw a lot in the war in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, and uh, you know that that he feels that the US government uh, was complicit in the September 11th attacks which is something that you mentioned Fred so you know all of these things are things that many people would find uh, obviously very very objectionable but the question is whether Correct. or not you're, you're allowed to put them on Facebook and is the government allowed to sort of look at what you're putting on but Facebook and take you into custody First of all, if it's on Facebook, it's public. Secondly, look, Esther Panitz is a great lady. I know her. She's a phenomenal criminal defense lawyer. And we're lucky to have people like her looking out for our rights. But there are limits on the First Amendment. Every eighth grader knows you can't yell fire in a crowded movie house. This guy has made comments that make people concerned that he's going to commit tremendous acts of violence which we've seen far too much of over the last 24 months. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Unless somebody can guarantee me that this guy's not going to go out and chop somebody's head off, law enforcement acted reasonably and acted in the yeah. only way they could under the circumstances. Let me ask you this, Esther. A judge ordered Raub uh, detained for another month. And in order to arrest him, they had to have uh, the support of a mental health professional. So you've got those two things. The doctor... The mental health professional said, yes, I believe he should be arrested. And now the judge, looking at this whole case, says you know, we need to hold him for a month. So that they must be seeing something here, I would, I would assume, based on those actions, that is of great concern to them. Well, Martha, from what I understand, I, I'm concerned about the timeline of all of this. My understanding is that the Secret Service and FBI went to his home to speak to him. Not that there was a mental health professional there. My understanding is that he was transported to a mental health facility where someone examined him, presumably at the behest of the FBI 
and Secret Service. So my question is, at what point did mental health really get involved? Because normally what this statute is used for is for people who go to the doctor and start babbling. I've had clients who were involuntarily detained because they make no sense. The fact that he is merely criticizing the government and nothing more well, at this point. I don't point. think it's merely criticizing the government to say, sharpen my axe, I'm here to sever heads. And as Fred aptly points out, you know, what if you look at these other situations in the Colorado movie theater and other places, you know, then they go back and look at what people have written and they look at folks who are around them and say, how could you not have acted on this when he was writing things like this? That's the, that's the concern. Martha, if there are specific threats, I'm going to the sever, sever the head of X, Y, right, and Z, or I'm yeah, going yeah, to yeah, this you know place what? on this date, that yeah. is an actual actionable, imminent threat. Actionable just like, issue. Correct. And, and, and just well, like Fred mentioned correctly, Wait, that you can't yell fire in a crowded theater because that's an imminent threat. Understood. But what this man do, did without more is not imminent and not actionable. Quick last thought, Fred, then we've got to go. You know what? It's a balancing act. Dexter's not wrong. But at the end of the day, I'd rather balance this guy's inconvenience for 30 days, and quite frankly, that's what it is, over making sure that something terrible doesn't happen. That's all, right. all so there is to it. Thanks so much to you both. Fred, Esther, uh, thank you. What Thanks for having me.